Thanks for checking in with me for this important news, breaking news, however you want to look at it, a sad situation in Iowa for two people that were killed in a church parking lot. And this one, you know, I talk about a lot of times about how these are not parking lots are not necessarily associated with church. They can be incidents where police were chasing somebody. This is not the case. This is one where you and I have to pay attention to it. Uh, plain and simple, two people are killed in a parking lot of a church as they're walking into a Bible study. So let's talk about it. And I first want to say, please stick with me on this video. I want to talk about the details. And then I want to talk about how this is so important to each of us dealing with church security. It's very important for us to pay attention to this incident and learn from it. But I first of all want to say no criticism here of the police response no criticism of the church, of their security plan, none of that. There, I am. I feel for them. I am saddened by this incident, and uh, you know, I am. I feel for them, and I mourn with them as well for this tragic situation. The details. Let's get right into the information. It was Wednesday night uh, before a college age group Bible study. And, uh, and, and actually, it sounds like it was a co-mingled. It was adults and college. They were trying to bring the local college folks to the church and actually doing a good job of that. In Ames, Iowa, I'm not going to mention names, churches, all that kind of stuff uh, in, in here. I'll put some stuff in the details below. But uh, this incident was started at 6.51 p.m. on June 2nd. 911 calls came in at just before seven o'clock and that there was a shooting in the parking lot. At 6.52, within a moment, the police are dispatched to this. They arrive right away. 6.56, police arrive at a quick four minute response time, but keep that in mind. Four minutes, a great response time, but as church security people, keep that in mind, four minutes. Uh, Ames police commander happened to be attending this function at the church. It happened so quickly, though. That's why my heart goes out. I'm not critical of people because this could happen to any of us at any of our facilities. And it happens just that quick. So he's inside. He runs out. And the situation is down to uh, police arriving also and them trying to render med medical aid to these victims. Uh, uh, Ames police commander, I mentioned that two females, both from the local university, one female in the shooting incident. And, and basically what it sounds like is this uh, young man arrives, pulls into the parking lot at the church. He has been having a dispute with one of the females. There's three females walking into the church together. He has been having a dispute with one of them. And he gets out of his vehicle and begins to shoot them. And he ends up shooting and killing two of the females. One is able to get to a hiding spot and it remains uninjured. So, uh, so it was isolated to the parking lot. None of it went inside the church. Uh, and so the shooting was really as a result of domestic violence. The domestic violence had been going on between one of the females that was killed and the male shooter. And it actually started on May 31st. So just a few days ago, the male had actually been charged and arrested for harassing the female after apparently the two had broken up. So they break up. He has some sort of meltdown over it. He gets arrested. He bails out. He's supposed to go back to court on June 10th. So, and this occurs on June 2nd. So, uh, so they've been having their issues. He shows up, finds the female, probably knows her schedule, pulls up, finds the females walking in together. His former girlfriend shoots her and another one of the girls. So here's what I want to talk about. You know, again, sad situation. It could happen to any of our churches. And, you know, it happens quickly. It happened just very quickly and it's over. They tried to render uh, medical aid. Uh, the two females, I believe, were transported to the hospital. I don't know about the male shooter, uh, but he did shoot himself at the scene. So he was deceased also. When we talk about the parking lot, that's important. And, you know, and I don't emphasize it enough, but 
If we can at all do it, we should try to get out and patrol the parking lot because of situations like this. I don't know if there's going to be any lawsuit over not patrolling the parking lot in this situation, not trying to protect people coming to church. I don't know. People can sue for anything. But here's what I do want to mention that it's so important for us to get out there into the parking lots and and patrol when we can. And I don't emphasize it too much because I know many of you are shorthanded. You've only got one or two of you, you know, but I do emphasize like we do at our church. We don't have a lot of security folks. But we try to do a little bit of everything. We come in and after our team meeting, we will then start our processes, which is because we're limited. We'll end up going out and standing in the parking lot as people are starting to arrive. Then we come in and watch the lobby. We usually have one stays in the lobby. One goes out to the parking lot and patrols around. Then we'll come in, check the kids area. One person stays in the lobby. One person's checking the kids area. Then that person goes back out does a tour around the church, checks the parking lot, comes back in. We help with offering and then uh, the person goes back out to the parking lot if there's time and uh, things permit and then they'll do a loop around the parking lot then they'll come back in and uh, they get ready for dismissal of the kids from the main auditorium into the kids area to make sure that nobody goes the wrong way and then they're back out and check in the parking lot. So with one person maintaining the lobby. So that's how we handle it with very few people as we're doing a lot of jobs and we're just constantly moving around checking things. So that is one important thing that I think that we need. And we need to remember, if we look at Bureau of Justice statistics, I'm looking at the statistics that I've compiled. It's very hard to get that information, but from police reports, the Bureau of Justice Statistics, on average, as I've been following this over, uh, looking at the stats over the last 20 years, it shows that 60%, 66% of our issues at churches actually occur outside. So they're not occurring inside the church. 33% are inside the church. 66% and, and some change outside. Uh, another important statistics, 59% uh, of those incidents occur in off hours. So right before church or after church. And so, are they, and you know, it extends a little bit further out than that. But here's what I want to say. Something we can learn from this is it's important to pay attention as people are arriving to church. And that includes your worship team, your singers, your early staff, and that includes staying late till your staff is gone, the pastor and any other leaders until they leave. If you can at all swing that, it's important for us to be sticking around for those incidents before and after the church services that are going on. So uh, so we want to be do as diligent as we can. And, and again, I know we're limited, but how much liability do we take on or, or does the church take on by not check in the parking lot. That's just something that I want to mention uh, uh, to you. So very important as I see it. So uh, and then also, you know, I'm currently in a series talking about cameras and, and needing those cameras. And I think ca cameras are very important in these situations to document, to document what we did. Did we go out and try to help? Were we out there at times patrolling? I think cameras can be an important part of our liability, as well as what we're talking about in our series. They can help us identify people in smaller crimes, not a big shooting like this. But I think that that is a very important. So I hope you'll take some good information away from this. Quick little uh, uh, briefing on the, this breaking news kind of situation. Don't forget to connect with us below, leave a comment. And always, we've got camera and equipment recommendations for you down below in the comments here. And also come over to churchsecurityanswerman.com and there's lots more information over there because we truly want to help you, especially in these uh, difficult situations that we go through. We want us thinking, we want you thinking, we want your team thinking about trying to do the best job that we can. And here's a situation that happened in the parking lot that we need to talk about and we need to challenge ourselves. What can we do to make sure that's not going to happen? Statistically, it's not going to happen to you, but what if it does? The statistics are very low, but what if something does happen? And really, what could minor? You know, I look at our parking lot and think, 
we're on a main highway kind of situation. So what if somebody's hitchhiking or somebody breaks down or somebody just decides to stop in our parking lot and they're just harassing our people, asking for stuff or scaring them, uh, those kind of things. And, and we want to be able to stop that kind of stuff from happening and protect our people and make them feel comfortable uh, coming to our services and coming to our facilities. Please like and subscribe also to connect with us. I want to connect with you through your comments, through you subscribing, so that you get our information as soon as we release that. And here's another video that might also help with this situation that we're talking about as well. So I'd follow up with this one.